game server watchdog processes register as possible QoS endpoints or I could set up an actual QoS server which does that thing I think it might be better just to have all game server watchdogs have QoS on them just because and I could actually put QoS on a per server basis so how many pings would that be how many servers do we have if we're running a bunch of games per server that's not too many we could also pick one per region and do it that way and then like maybe a maximum of five or six or something okay so QoS So QoS region and QoS server, and that'll be in here. And we'll we'll store this crap as like a JSON string there because it doesn't matter. We're not going to search it. So QoS server, QoS context. Um, so I should have a QoS flow here. So that's going to be the game server watchdog. We are going to heartbeat. our QoS endpoint and that's it we just heartbeat our QoS endpoint and we'll and that'll be it alright so So we need the GMSDB. It's going to have the we're going to have a string here which is going to be our QoS server ID, reported time, QoS region, QoS server, and I guess our TCP host, uh, yeah, so we'll need our private public host, our private host as well. We will need our UDP port and our TCP port. So that'll be that system, and then we need our QoS cleanup. And that's going to be on our App Master. We are going to read the uh, QoS endpoint table and timeout non reporting QoS endpoints. All right, so for our party, so our party transitional read our QoS endpoint information. Um, this will make it all available for us using our game server watchdog. So we'll actually have per server specific QoS information if we want it. We'll clean it up. Um, so we need. So we got our GMS table, we need our QoS endpoint table. Uh, do we need a host here? Yeah, we probably should also have this with like a public private host and all this information right here. Just to be there. Well, because we're going to have to send that to 
our users. Okay. So to recap everything, let's make sure I got it. So we have QoS. Uh, we have our game server list with a dynamic get dedicated game server pool. Um, we'll, we don't have to have any of these things. We just need the app server master in order to run some basic stuff. We have parties, but it's more like a party registry uh, for the member uh, for the mission. Uh, we go through this user flow for the actual missions on our game servers and we store results over there. Our mission data structures have everything that we need. Our editor flow for mission creation allows us to use U assets. Um, we push it out using data and that data is going to be set in S3. We download a local copy of that data um, and We need stats database. We also need a GMS database for game servers. Well, there we go. There's missions. That's uh, it's our missions design. That whole thing. All right. So let me th let me think. The next step for this is to actually uh, break this down into singular tasks and things that should be built in order, and that way I can actually put it together and hand it off to Adam, and we can actually have missions. So all the multiplayer mission stuff is going to come later, but I need to make sure I don't dig myself put myself into a corner with it. And it's also sometimes nice to work on some more of the infrastructure stuff because it's something different you, a, a developer that is engaged and wants to work on something is a much more productive developer than somebody who's always waiting for shit to compile uh, that can be just frustrating so when this is all done we have a dynamic mission system with well have we actually designed the like maybe a daily challenge mission sort of thing. We have not designed that system. So what would we want to do for something like that? Weekly, if we had like a time-based challenge mission, what would it look like? We need a system that's going to actually run and create new missions and update the files for that mission on S3. So we'd have two mission files is what we would actually need here. So we would need S3 files. So we have multiple files which we can grab. Um, one is the temp temporary mission list. Okay, so the temporary mission list is probably going to need to be controlled by something else. It's going to need to be I need like a rotation for for these missions. We would want to earn special things for them. We haven't even gotten into like we've got all these results, but it's doing this other stuff. All right, so I think temporary missions are out of scope of this design. That would be, um, I think that'll be a special thing that we put on top of this. Uh, so just S3. So temporary missions should be something else. And we're just going to have like weekly results for the same mission. And the temporary missions will be built on top of this, but will be a separate system. And that's okay because, well, our requirements are different. You're going to have to be online and to, to fetch it because it's dynamic new stuff, right? So whatever. All right, well, I 
I think that's finished. I think we have our missions and our stats design completed. So I've got some other things I need to go do today, so I'm going to go do them. But that is excellent that we have a finished design for missions and all that. So let's check that in. And let's also go send a scary picture of this to Adam. So I'll just send that to Adam and he will be horrified. <laughs> Excellent. So that's all good to go. So I am going to sign off here. Thanks for sticking around and for all the interesting questions or the not interesting questions. So I don't think I'll be back on today because I'll probably be breaking down some tasks and uh, some plans that aren't really public knowledge. So good luck and goodbye.